So over the past two weeks, we have seen weakness in the markets with the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, and even Singapore STI all selling down by more than two, three, four percent. Right. So where are we right now, and can it actually be an opportunity to get in on dips based on this weakness? Hey guys, Joey here, top tier reminder, trader in Philip Securities, and in this video, we'll be diving into these four major indices the dow jones the s p 500 the nasdaq and singapore's sti as well to see where we are right now and could it actually be a bargain real soon based on this recent weakness and what is the main you know cause of this selling down well because the federal reserve have came out over the past two weeks and mentioned that due to inflation uh, still being at the elevated levels um, rates would have to stay higher for longer that means going forward into next year interest rate the fed fund rates would need to stay high at more than five percent even up to end of 2024 and that's where the market got a little bit spooked and it started to see a bit of weakness with the tech stock selling off as well and we are kind of expecting another rate hike maybe in the next month or so and that is more or less predicted all right but in terms of rates staying higher for longer that is not really expected because people were actually expecting rate cuts starting from next year maybe like four rate cuts but now it probably be one or two rate cuts and they want to keep rates or the fed fund rates high all right so that's the main reason and let's take a look at the major indices the dow jones let's start in the dow jones first we see where are we right now are there any critical support levels whereby we could hate to and that level must hold or we could actually see more weakness ahead or it could actually be a bargain if we see some stability there that's where you could time your entry uh, to get in to write the etf as well if you're looking at trading this uh, indices that's where you could time your entry to get in right to write the rebound for the markets as well right so let's take a look at dow jones and then we go on to the s p 500 and the nasdaq and then finally we go on to the STI So this is the Dow Jones here trading at about 33,000. So last time we saw all the major indices selling down, Dow Jones sold off by more than 400 points, down by about 1.3%. And there was some data that came out that shows that the labor market remains tight. And also in terms of the 10 year treasury yield, right? It rose above 4.8% to its highest level since about 2007, right? So all this could lead the Federal Reserve, right, to hike rates or it could leave more room for rate hikes. And that's the reason why we are seeing weakness same like last week, All right? So let's take a look at the Dow Jones to see where we are right now and where could some bargain hunting or some support actually come back, right? So you can see for Dow Jones, right, we have headed to a high above that 30 5,000. So 35,000 was a pretty good support, you know, somewhere in August, we we're holding above 35,000 for like three weeks. Pretty good, right? And then suddenly we broke that 35,000 support level and we went back to this consolidation phase, right? From about 34,000 to 35,000. So it's like a 1,000 range. And over the past one, two weeks right over here, you can see that we broke down this 34,000 as well and more selling actually came back. So what would be the next support level? Well, I would say that the next support level will be right over here around, around that 32,500 level. So you can see right over here that was somewhere in May, all right, May become like touch or headed to this level. We saw a couple of uh, bullish candles, started to see a bit of rebound. So around that 32,500, and you can see it was also the support level whereby we have seen last year as well. So that would be about 32,500, all right. If that holds, great. Hopefully we can see some bargain hunting near this support level. If not, if the 32,500 were to give way, then unfortunately we might hit a little bit lower to the next support level and it could be all the way down towards where we were somewhere in March, right? That could be around that 31,500. So what we want to see right now is that this short term trend, right? So when we look at the uh, trend, right? So in terms of the trend, you can see that this 20 days moving average line, the green line is what we call the 20 days moving average, right? So if this green line is pointing down, which is still pointing down right now, we could actually see more short term weakness, which is what is happening right now. Because when, as you can see, right, when we broke this 35,000 level, the 20 days moving average start to point down, it's still pointing down, 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 and we broke 34, it is still pointing down. So right now, short term trend, unfortunately, would still be down for now, all right? And hopefully, we, as I say, we 
reach the 32,500 and we stabilize a little bit like what we see over here and this 20 days moving average starts to flatten out or maybe even reverse back up that could lead what we call the upside reversal all the way back up to maybe 34,000 first all right so this is Dow Jones right take a look of the key level 32,500 that's where we could potentially hopefully right see some support coming back Next would be the S&P 500 index, right? A very popular index that makes up the top 500 companies in the US, right? So let's see where we are right now. So you can see that for S&P 500, same thing we have sold off uh, last night as well by more than 1%. It is currently about 4,229, 4,229, all right? And same thing about two, three months back, we hit it towards this very key resistance level around that 4,006. Look at this, we touched uh, last year as well. One time, two time, we sold off. So when we hit towards the resistance level, that's where selling can actually happen again. So that's what we saw, all right? Came back down and we found some good support as well. So that was around that 4,350. You can see we hit it, you know, holding above this 4,350, went up, came back down, retested, swing back up, then swing down. You can see over the past two weeks, we have broken the 4,350. So this 4,350 was like a resistance, turn support, and unfortunately, that has broken down. So what would be the next support level for the S&P 500 index. So if you're trading like the ETF for the S&P 500 index, that would be the SPY, all right? A very popular uh, ETF if you would just like to take a position in the index itself, all right? And you don't want to do any stock pick, that's what you could trade as well, all right? So the next support level, I would say would be this very critical level. That level would be none other than the four, 1200 look at this right since last year 4200 was a very key resistance level as well we touched about one two three four and somewhere around june right early of june you can see that when we broke this 4200 the move really started all the way up to 4006 so 4002 is a really key support and you can see that when we approach this 4002 since last year october for more than a year right we form what we call higher low so that's a sign of strength as we approach the 4002 and eventually broke the 4002 uh, that's where the uptrend really started to form for the s p 500 index in the longer term all right and in terms of the longer term trend well we can also look at what we call the moving averages so the red line the blue line is what we call the 100 days moving average and the 200 days moving average they are still pointing up so the longer term trend i wouldn't say is down for now it's still pointing up right of course in the short term we can still see weakness and that's what we're seeing right now as it breaks certain support level but you can see that now we are approaching this very critical support level at 4002 so it's like 4229 all right it's very near the 4200 level and that's potentially where some bargain hunting can come back again so resistance to support level if we will to hold above 4002 that could be a very good base for a short-term reversal to happen so what we're going to see is they're going to see they're going to stay above the 4002 for a few days for a week or two and then we see the short-term trend start to turn up as well like for example right now you can see that the 20 days moving average is still pointing down right because as i say we broke certain support level so the short term is still a little bit weaker but if we do see the 20 days moving average starts to flatten out like what we see over here we got a consolidation it flattens out and it starts to point up all right or maybe right over here when it flattens out and start to point up that could be a sign of the short term trend finally turning a little bit more bullish right near this support level and that could lead the reversal back up for the entire s p 500 index and look at this right here the 4200 level also coincides with where the 200 days line is look at this this blue line is what we call the 200 days moving average and it actually coincides with the 4200 level so definitely want to give a little bit more weight to this level because there are three or four factors now pointing to that as a good support and if we do see some really good bullish uh, candlestick price actions near here that could really lead the reversal okay let's take a look at the nasdaq composite index right the index that makes up some of the top technology stocks as well all right and you can see that we are trading at about 13,059 points right 13,059 so you can see that this is pretty much back to where we are in terms of a support level we have found somewhere in august last year so it's a bit of resistance same thing we broke above it somewhere in june and then we started to see the upside all the way up to 14 thousand five hundred so you can see now we are uh, swinging up and down and we are back to this same support level at that thirteen 
13,000. So 13,000 would be a psychological level as well, all right? And uh, if the 13,000 level were to break down, then unfortunately, we might see more weakness towards the next support level, which will be somewhere around that 12,400 to 12,000. 300 level right over here you can see that was where we saw a couple of resistance here resistance resistance and when we broke up we headed to 13,000 that gave way we started to push a little bit higher right so 13,000 and then if that breaks maybe around that 12,000 300 to 12,400 level that is where the next support level could be all right so what can we do right now so i would say that you know same thing for nasdaq uh, we are still seeing some weakness because uh, the 20 days moving average a short-term trend is still down for now even though we are back at this 13,000 support so what could be done is that we can wait for a few weeks a few days or right? maybe next week or two weeks uh, to see if the short-term trend starts to stabilize we still hold above 13,000 if that happens great uh, that is where uh, we could see a potential reversal in the short-term trend as well and with the longer term trend still up and the short term trend reversing up as well well that could give a little bit more upside in terms of uh, the reversal slowly starting to happen and the market starting to turn a little bit more bullish okay let's take a look at the sti the straits times index in singapore which has also sold off due to weakness in the u.s market uh, sti has sold off as well right so we are trading at about 3151 so if you want to trade like the e sti index then you can trade what we call the sti etf as well all right that pretty much tracks the index all right so at 3151 right now what would be this very critical support level whereby you could time your entry whereby we have seen a couple of re bounce over the past one to two years right well i would say that this level will be none other than the 3100 so i've talked about this level in my previous youtube videos as well you can take a look at it uh, we have touched many times since last in fact since 2021 as well a couple of touches or near as it nears it you know bias came back and it starts to push up as well and even this year somewhere in july we got a bullish candle start to see a bit of rebound it nears it all right and buyers are starting to come back up so that would be the zone right from 3100 maybe 3050 let me just highlight it in green color right here so that would be kind of like the zone whereby if it does dip from 3050 to 3150 that is potentially where some really good bargain hunting has happened over the past one to two years and that's where you could also time your entry to get in right to write the reversal all the way up to maybe around that 3400 to 34 five zero level that could potentially be the upside so you can see that for the sti it looks a little bit different from like the nasdaq and the s&p 500 which has sold off heavy heavily last year due to the rate highs and all that but for sti we did we did sell off as well but you know we were pretty much moving sideways right we're pretty much moving sideways it's not really in a very firm downtrend and that's the reason why there was no a clear uptrend reversal because it was just moving sideways whereas for the nasdaq and the s&p 500 it was a clear downtrend and then we started to turn up and then now we are turning into an uptrend of course in the short term some selling is happening right now all right so that's the difference between the sti and the us market we are pretty much range bound right now for the sti which could be a good opportunity as i say right if you hit to those levels very good support levels you could try to time your entry to get in all right to get out maybe as it rebounds towards 3 3 to 3 4 that's where selling can happen again all right guys there we have it i've pretty much covered the four major indices the dow jones the s p 500 the nasdaq and even singapore's sti as well so i hope you have a clearer picture of where we are right now for each of the indices if you are prepared or you are looking to trade the etf for each of the indices that's what you want to know as well in terms of the key levels where some buying pressure can actually come back and what we want to look out for in terms of the trend reversal so normally what we want to do is that even though we hit to a support level doesn't mean it's rebounded like three or four or five times means it will surely rebound this time what we want to do is that we want to see some stability at least or at least the shorter term trend starting to stabilize or flatten out or maybe even start to turn up that could lead the short term reversal Bolster, right so even though the longer term trend is up right we can see weakness in the short term and when we are seeing weakness in the short term we don't want to try to rush to get in to try to catch the, the dips all right because you know it can hit lower and lower especially if the support to break down again we can actually hit lower we only want to think about getting in when the short term trend looks less bullish i hope sorry looks less 
bearish. All right, I hope that makes sense. Right, so Joey here. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to see you in the next video. If you like this video, guys, go ahead to give me a like, smash the subscribe button as well, so that you will not miss out on videos like this. And if you want to find out a little bit more on the strategy that we're using, how we have a system to guide us for entry and exit for stocks, even the indices, then you can attend one of those free webinars that we're still running. All right, I'll put the link below this video. Click on it, attend one of those free webinars, and as well, share with you a bit more on my one good trend strategy and system. Joey here. Thank you so much. Take care.